friends, it's Miracle, and today I have a historical fiction books recommendation. Historical fiction is one of my favorite genres. I always think that a good historical fiction can make us learn so much about history and culture in a very vivid way. Today, I have six books with me. Some of them are new releases, and some of them are books that were well loved a couple of years ago, but I don't see people talking about them anymore. I kind of want to bring them back to the community and recommend them to the people who's not familiar with them. The first book I got here is *The Ancient World* by Lise Moore. This book was very popular in 2016 and 2017, but now the hype is kind of died down, and I think it is the great time to pick it up. This book is set in America and has two parallel timelines. The first timeline is in the 80s, which is the historical part kicks in, and the second timeline is around 2009. This story centered on a young woman called Ada, who was raised by her single father, a Computer scientist called David. When she was little, she always accompanied her dad to the lab where he works. And when David's work started to get more acknowledgement, the mysterious background of his started to also come to the surface. Later on, David got Alzheimer's and left Ada in a very difficult situation. And Ada started to reconstruct her dad's life and learn about his history. I loved this book so much because it's a perfect combination of historical fiction and mystery. As readers, we learn about David's past with Ada together, and every piece of information we got about David is so perfectly unpredictable. We also got to see how Ada dealt with her father's Alzheimer's, and I cared about her so much when she faced the difficult times. The story is like peeling onions; different layers of things revealed after one another, and in the end, you'll see the historical marker stamped. On David and Ada's life. The second historical fiction I got here is about indigenous people in China. The book is called *The Last Quarter of the Moon* by Chi Zijian. It's translated from Chinese by Bruce Holmes, and the Chinese title of this book is called *Er Gu Na He You An*. This is the winner of the Mao Dun Literature Prize, which is one of the most powerful literary prizes in China. A very old woman, who is the wife of the last chief of Evenki tribe, sits among the trees and thinks over her life, love, joy, and tragedy. This book was written as she narrated her life story. Evenki people is one of the 56 ethnic groups in China, and、uh, they believed in shamanism. Historically, Evenki people has a nomadic pastoralism lifestyle. They enjoy the mountains, the、uh, nature, be friend with the reindeers. But the joyful nature also brings them difficulties, and it's hard for them to benefit from the modern kind of lifestyle. So in the early 2000s, a tribe of Evenki people decided to settle down in the mountains in Inner Mongolia, which is a province in China. And this book is. Highly inspired by that event, this book has so much rich history and culture told from the voice of the very old lady, who's talking about hundreds of years of people's history, from her grandparents' generation to her great grandchildren's generation. This book opens my mind to a ethnic group that I rarely heard before. The strongest feeling I got from this book is the sorrow in many people's lives because they've lived in such a critical climate. And later on, they got stuck between the traditional lifestyle and the modern convenience. By adapting the modernness bit by bit, they also are losing their identity gradually, which is actually understandable, but also heartbroken to read about. So many tragedies happened in this book. But initially, I have the question because so many people died. But the writing of the death is in such a brushed-off way, and I don't understand why the writing about death can be so light. But later on in this book, the narrator actually addressed this. She said, "Their birth and their death, sorrows and joys, marriages and funerals, and they needn't to be so many taboos." From that sentence on, I started to see that book in a life circle way, and I remember it was that moment I started to see everything. People, I started to see their traditional and their connection to the nature, and it was that moment, that sentence, makes me fall in love with this book.
Next up, we have Stay With Me by Ayubami Adbel. This is a historical fiction set in Nigeria, and it's her debut novel, which is also shortlisted for the Women's Press for Fiction that year. This book is set in the 80s, centered around a young couple called Yahida and Akin. They fall in love in university and are happily married. Although it's expected for Aki to take on multiple wives, as a couple, they decided to not adapt polygamy. But the pressure of not having children is increasing day by day after four years that they cannot conceive. And one day, finally, Aki's family appeared in the doorway and introduced Yahida, his second wife. This book was such an emotional ride to me. We were introduced to the couple after the conflict has already upgraded, and we read from both of them's perspectives, but I clearly cared more about Yahida. I followed her journey from when she thought she has the sturdy life to when she had no solutions but to give in to reality. So many things are out of the couple's control. When their lives is slipping out of their hands, my heart was grabbed by this book. Following, I have The Straits by Emily Biddle. This is also my favorite cover of all time. This follows a couple of young friends, Lily and Eva, but it's more about Lily's growth after she detached from Eva. Lily is from an everyday family, a normal girl at her time. At the first day of her new school, she met Eva, who's the daughter of a very infamous painter. Eva's life fascinates Lily as she took her into so many aspects of activities that Lily has never encountered before. So she happily immersed herself into Eva's social circles and had a great deal of time. But because of their different background, their friendship was never equal, never balanced. And I just loved it about this book. I love to read about the subtle feelings of the characters. I love to read about their sensitive emotions. And I think this book just like precisely captured everything, and I somehow related to Lily on some level. One of the sentences I underlined in this book goes as, I held my hand out to her, but she had already passed me and was out the door. If this is not a 100% of a young, fragile, unequal friendship, I don't know what it is then. I think that sentence is one of the essence of this book and it's also why I loved it so much. And it maybe also tells you that I had very traumatized friendship memories from my youth. Next, we have The Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock by Imogen Hermes Gower. This is a historical fiction with a hair of magical realism set in the 1785 London. Mr. Hancock is gifted a infant mermaid crops one day, and this inspired the curiosity of people in town. In the same time, there's a prostitute is worried about her glorious days is coming to an end. And although the mermaid kind of play a big role in the book title, this book is more about the intertwined fate of the two characters. The reason why I enjoyed this book so much is because of the writing, particularly the prose of the book. Every sentence is exceedingly beautiful written. I've never read a book with such elegant writings. Every sentence is so wonderful to read about. But this book also comes with flaws, which makes it a little bit harder for me to recommend. This book has three volumes, while the third volume is extremely stunning and a well-deserved 5 out of 5 stars. The first two volumes are not as strong, but they're not bad either. So if you want to read this book, maybe be prepared that you won't be amazed as much in the first two parts, but I think, I hope the third volume is worth waiting. I have another reason why I love this book and also I plan to reread it sometimes in the future. It's because there is one particular scene in, at the end of the book which is so beautiful and so vivid that I want to paint it. The last book is a book I read last year. It's one of my favorite books of 2021, and it is also the book that inspired this video. The book is A Girl is a Body of Water by Jennifer Nasabka Makumbi. The English title of this English title, the British title of this book is called The First Woman. It is a historical fiction set in Uganda in 1970s. We follow the growth of a girl called Kirabo until she became a strong, independent young woman. She lived in a Uganda village with her grandparents and she never knows who is her mother. So looking for her mom becomes one of the main drives in her life. On the journey, she experienced different forces 
existing life, her feminist identity awakened along with the nation together. She learned about traditional cultures and values, and also blend them in with the Western ideas that was challenging Uganda at the time. I loved the rich Uganda culture that packed in this novel. It also does the comparison between villages' life and cities' life, the traditional values and modern ideas. It also did a great job on reflecting the Uganda's history talking about things such as slavery and colorism. The book is set in the Idi Amin region, so it also painted a background picture of the infamous dictatorship and how that created a horrifying atmosphere and made people's life miserable. I really enjoyed this book, and I think this is the historical fiction that taught me the most last year. And that's all the books I have today. I hope this video inspired or introduced or reintroduced you some historical fiction and are you a historical fiction reader? Have you read any of them? Or do you have other favorite historical fiction to recommend to me? Please let me know in the comment section down below. And don't forget to say hi. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thumbs up if you like it. I wish you happy reading. Stay healthy. I'll see you in my next bookish video. Bye.